Hey, Buru, hey, boy, I boot you to everybody in Cyberland. It's your favorite Baba Lao. At least I hope so. Coming at you with another great video. And this time I wanted to kind of highlight something that's very special. Something that we all should find and seek in our lives before we pass. And that's love. Right? Today is Valentine's Day. And we need to reflect on the love that we have in our lives. I'm sure we hear tons of, of uh, stories and ideas and perspectives on this thing that we call Valentine's Day. But, you know, I'm a strong believer that we should never give up an opportunity to, to reflect, an opportunity to show the ones that we love that that is important. Right. Yes, every day can be Valentine's Day. Every day you should show some form of love. But when you have a moment and you and you focus on something that's being celebrated, you know, worldwide or countrywide or or whatnot, we begin to see that there is an aspect of, you know, we need to remember who we are, what effects do we have on other people, and we need to take advantage of that. So Valentine's Day is very special. And, and you begin to see that Valentine's Day, no different in Odu Ifa, speaks on love, harmony, relationships. And there's certain Odu's that provide us with, no kidding, real insight and perspective and guidance on love. We always reflect on the aspects of Otrum when we look at love and we look at that, that nature of, of how we express ourselves when two people truly care about each other. And we use this word called love. But more importantly, you know, when we look through the 256 Odus of Ifa, you know, we begin to piece together that knowledge and wisdom that also reinforces love. And I do this video, why? Because one is Valentine's Day. Two, everything in life begins to guide us in an aspects of making sure that we find that peace and harmony and love is part of that equation. So why not let's talk about love and why not share a pataki so we can better understand that maybe sometimes we got to put away our differences in order for the greater good. Odun Ifa resonates the theme of love and harmony specifically in an Odun called Oturamei. Oturamei emphasizes peace, harmony, love, light. It urges all of us Right, to engage in the deep examination of mind, heart, and our spiritual selves. Right, This uh, introspective idea to engage in this deep examination is aimed on discovering the wisdom of Ifa, the wisdom that we have within ourselves, the most powerful divinity that we all have, which is our Ori, because that's necessary so that we can fulfill our earthly destiny and our spiritual growth. This is why I want to take this serious. It's not just because it's Valentine's Day and it's a corporate holiday and, and, and people are going to make tons of money off of us because we're all out buying heart-shaped boxes and flowers, etc. No. We got we to gotta search for that nurturing aspects and celebrate love for what it is. And understand that Ifa and Odu Ifa and Lokumi and Santaria and all these faith systems that fall under this umbrella called Ifa truly aim towards something that's love. So I wanted to kind of share that with you, not only because we have an Orisha that's governed with love when we talk about Ochun, but I think for the most part, we all understand that there are always a Pataki that teaches us about that reflection. So I want to share a pataki with you that comes out of the Odu Ifa, Iwuri Owani. In Iwuri Owani, this story has a deep meaning. And I'm going to go over what that meaning is, but let's get into it. In the story of Iwuri Owani, we talk about where a very proud king who didn't allow his subjects to visit or befriend his servants had a daughter. And this daughter was very sick for a very long time. And despite spending a lot of money on healers who suggested that she was suffering from Maleojo, the evil eye, 
from past generations of envy. She didn't recover, right? And one day, one of the servants suggested to the king that he should consult Orumina about his daughter's illness. The king was too prideful. Why look for guidance when he was the king? He already sent for his healers and the healers did what they did and there was nothing more to speak on. There was no power greater than him and that was something that he truly reflected on as a character trait. As we can all tell that he has a daughter that he loves very much. Well, the princess, obviously she got worse and the king was driven by love but his love was so blinded by his pride, right? That he finally had to give up at a moment's notice and, and seek out Urumila's help. So he sends a messenger to Urumila, but Urumila sends word back that he's too busy and that the king needs to visit his palace. Now, the king, how we already understand that he's prideful. And the king initially refused. He felt it was beneath him. Rumila said, while you're on your hunting trip, you can stop by. The king still refused. Eventually, his daughter was not getting any better. So he decided to go to Rumila's house. When he entered Rumila's house, the king was not used to bowing his head to no one due to his pride. So he accidentally knocked his crown off of his head when he tried to lower himself under the door frame. The crown rolled away into the forest. And one by one, his subjects were passing the crown around and hiding it. That forced the king to go door to door asking for his crown. When the crown was finally returned, the king went back to Arumila's house. This time, removing his crown before entering. Arumila told him, Arumila told him from the door that the only crown that prevailed there was his own. The king replied, realizing that his pride had only served to humiliate him and acknowledged that he hadn't, if he hadn't have been so proud, his subjects would not have hidden the crown. And his daughter would not still be sick in the situation that she's in, still worsening day in and day out. Orumila did also day on the king. And he also they came out with this Odumifa, Obiwuri Owani. And at that very moment, Olumila told the king what to do, did the ebosas, and the princess was healed. But one of the most important aspects of that also day was that Orumila Lowa, based on the cafetelleri of that king, the king's illness in his head, his osolboaron cafeteleri, the illness he was causing from himself was spreading amongst his own family. He was causing the damage to the person that he loved. So what does this story emphasize? But the pride, the humility, the importance to seek wisdom and guidance because we do not have all the answers. Ifa tells us in this pataki that sometimes we love so much, but we don't put aside our differences. We love so much that we don't reflect and say, hey, you know, maybe the right thing to do is to try a different technique. Maybe my mannerisms are not conducive to this situation. So why do I say this? Because I had this conversation. Valentine's Day, corporate holiday. I'm not going to spend money. I'm not going to do this. Okay, great. But if you have 365 days in a year and your character trait is so focused on working and so focused on 
taking care of the house or doing X, Y, and Z, should we not maybe put that aside at least maybe one day and focus on the ones that we love? Valentine's Day is not necessarily a bad thing, but it reminds us that love is important. It reminds us in this pataki that we got to set aside our differences in order to find the solutions of love. Like I mentioned earlier, love is intertwined in Oduifa. In Oduifa, it teaches us that that is part of the components of that peace and harmony and making sure that we meet our destiny. I hope you enjoyed the pataki because I understand that patakis have meaning. And it's not always that we get the pataki, but we get the, the no kidding, what does that mean? So with that said, Iburu, Iboya, Ibucheche, Sabalan, Fair Babalao, at least I hope so. Hope you enjoyed the video.